David here with something a little different. Uh, not with Figboot on pens, but Figboot on travel. Uh, the family and I recently took a uh, two-week trip to China, and I wanted to document the trip for myself and thought it might be something that uh, some of you might find interesting as well. Um, for some of those of you who support this channel through Patreon, uh, it's my intention to release each of these travel vlogs uh, a little bit early for supporters and then a few days uh, make them available on this channel. Uh, and since these really aren't pen related videos, each part of this travel vlog will be posted as a uh, free video on Patreon. So. Uh, if you'd care to support this channel via Patreon, uh, you can check out the link below and in the notes. Um, I appreciate everyone's support and plan on creating more supporter perks down the line. Um, the documentation for this trip is going to span a few videos. I I'm thinking probably two, but we'll see how it goes. There is a lot to go over in regard to this trip, and I wanted to show you a lot of things and share a bunch of info, uh, but, uh, you know, and, but still keep it interesting. Uh, in regard to things like facts and pronunciations and, 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 and things like that, uh, I uh, will do my best to provide the most accurate info I can, but in a lot of cases I'm passing a lot of info that myself was told, you know, if a temple really was from the fourth emperor and not the third, then please forgive the mistake. I'm doing the best with what I have. My goal here with this vlog is to uh, document the trip and discuss a bit about the country and show some things that are a little bit different than the main tourist stops. But there will be plenty of that content as well. Uh, my original idea was to kind of vlog as the trip went on, recording my thoughts in the hotel every couple of days. But after doing that once, I realized I left out so much and I was missing out spending, uh, speaking directly to some of the pictures and video I shot. So I, I decided to make this a little more polished rather than just throwing together Together something on the fly. Uh, these videos are as much for me and my family as they are for you, so uh, I wanted to do it justice. Over the span of two weeks, we stayed in uh, eight different hotels, nine if you count sleeping on a train. Uh, we visited six different regions spanning approximately 2,500 miles. It was quite the adventure. Uh, it was a trip we had been planning for several years. Um, it was nice. Uh, I was able to actually cash in virtually all of my frequent flyer miles for the four round trip tickets, so that helped out a great deal. Okay, that's enough pre-talk. Let's get to the actual trip. Uh, we live in the Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina, and getting to Beijing takes about 14 hours of flying time. Our first flight was through Detroit, uh, and there we continued through to Beijing. Uh, you, you know you might be in, a rough, in for a rough flight when the guy sitting across from the aisle from you, uh, right after sitting down, asks the flight attendant for an air sickness bag. Uh, fortunately for both of us, uh, he didn't need to use it. Uh, Detroit actually has a very nice airport if you haven't been there. Uh, at times I've had to travel a bit for work and uh, some airports are definitely better than others and Detroit uh, is a decent airport. Uh, the flight from Detroit to Beijing is almost 13 hours. Uh, you know, whenever I have a long flight, I have the best intentions to get thing accompli things accomplished and to use the time to be productive. And I am rarely successful in that quest. Uh, there is just something about flights that gets me into a, a uh, vegetative state that results in me just uh, enduring the flight. Uh, I brought a number of pens with me and my goal was to write a number of reviews to uh, get a bit ahead and I didn't write anything. Uh, it was a bit tough. Uh, the lights were actually dimmed for the vast majority of the flight as everyone attempted to sleep. Um, and, and I didn't feel like being that guy with a light on that disturbs everyone around him. So I ended up watching a number of uh, really good movies. Uh, after about 13 hours, we landed in Beijing and made our way through customs and met up with our guide. For the duration of our trip, in each city we visited, we had a uh, local Chinese-speaking guide as well as a driver. Uh, while I am up for an adventure, uh, this was a trip where we went through uh, an agency to plan and coordinate an itinerary where we would travel and what we would see each day. Uh, this tri trip involved a, a great deal of planning. It wasn't a, a vacation you could just improvise as you went along, so having a guide and a driver helped immensely. Uh, after that long day of travel, we arrived in Beijing, and so uh, you know we had left in at 4 a.m. on a Sunday and arrived at 7 p.m. on Monday. Uh, right outside the airport, I ran into this sign. Uh, I, encou I encountered a large number of questionable English translations. Uh, this one said, "Cherish life. Stay away from unlicensed taxi." 
Now, when it comes to signs like this, I would try to figure out what they were trying to say. Uh, my guess is it was something like, be careful. But uh, still, I like cherish life. That just sounds so much nicer. Uh, here's a view out of our hotel room. Uh, Beijing is a city with a population of 22 million, which is like two and a half times larger than New York, the uh, largest city in the United States. Beijing is really a blend of old and new. Uh, you can tell here there is a modern, you know, like French inspired architecture. Uh, and then, you know, near that you have more of a traditional looking building. Uh, we were told this was actually a hospital, uh, one of the better ones in the city. But we never saw an ambulance or anything like that. So I think that like like hospital must be a, a translation uh, issue. Maybe it was more of a doctor's office rather than a traditional hospital. Uh, there is a 12 hour time difference between where I live and Beijing. So your body clocks get significantly jacked up. Uh, noon is suddenly midnight and it takes several days to adjust. Uh, also, on a side note, uh, even though China is virtually identical in size to the United States, they only have a single time zone. So imagine what it would be like if both the east and west coast of the U.S. were in the same time zone. Uh, in some ways, it would be nice, like for sports and live television events and things like that, but uh, that would be very odd. Uh, the first night, the rest of the family was worn out, but I uh, went around the corner to a local restaurant for a bite to eat. Uh, here's the drink menu with some interesting translations. Uh, there was uh, the Arctic Ocean, which I'm not quite sure uh, really what that was. Uh, and then I'm really not sure what listen to the Coke and listen to the Sprite would translate to. Uh, you know, here's what I had, a really nice chicken dish and then some nice uh, sesame rice balls. I just love these things. They were one of my uh, favorite things I eat or ate on this entire trip. Uh, be warned, there'll be a bunch of food pictures in this vlog. I thought that would be interesting just to kind of show a lot of the food that we ate as well. So the first night was a bit rough. The next morning, we actually headed over to Tiananmen Square, which was about half an hour from the hotel. The area was crowded, mainly because uh, there was a, a visit from a dignitary from an African country going on that day, and the square itself was closed, so you could only walk around it. Now, uh, we had been able to actually walk on the square during a previous vid visit. Um, surrounding the square is a large number of government buildings. This building here is Mao's tomb, where you can go to see Mao, who is actually preserved in a uh, glass coffin, I believe. Uh, years ago, when we first visited the square, our tour guide uh, instructed us before we actually got there to uh, not ask her any sensitive questions while we were out there in the square and that she would answer any questions at a later time. Uh, basically, it would not be wise to stand out there and uh, loudly ask, so uh, exactly where were all the tanks? The government is always present in China. Uh, across the street from Tiananmen Square is the Forbidden City, uh, which serves as the home for the Emperor of China uh, for about 500 years, uh, from about the 15th century up until uh, around 1912. Uh, here is the famous entrance where you walk under the portrait of Chairman Mao. Uh, without getting too deep into it, the Chinese people, are, I believe, are well aware that Everything Mao did was not good, but it is still not advisable to speak out against Mao or the government in any way. We were told of a recent incident where a television presenter made a derogatory mark about Mao on their show, and they were promptly fired and lost their show. Uh, the Forbidden City is huge, with many large buildings and a ton of smaller ones with gardens and courtyards. Uh, there's almost a thousand buildings in total. There was one building, however, I was interested in seeing, and that was the Hall of Mental Cultivation, which is the room that the Twisby Pen Company is named after. Uh, there wasn't a lot of things to do in China that related to fountain pens that I was going to be able to do. This was basically going to be it for me for the trip. Uh, it took a very long time for me to finally find a sign that told me where the room was at. Uh, it was really a bit of a maze. But after a great deal of searching, I found the room, only to find out that it had been closed for renovations since 2015. So here is a picture of my Twisby Diamond 580 in front of the sign telling me that the room has been closed. Uh, in one of the gift shops, I did come across a bunch of washi tape, which was cool. I had to pick up a couple of those. You could never have too much washi tape. 
Uh, the grounds were beautiful and uh, with lots of uh, traditional Chinese architecture. Uh, when entering most rooms, you're actually required to step over a large board or sometimes it's a piece of metal. Uh, these are to ward off evil, evil spirits. Uh, apparently, evil spirits like to hang out close to the ground. Uh, so these do a good job of uh, deterring them from entering the buildings. Uh, here's one of the doors, and you can see uh, on the door, it looks like a knocker, but it's really like a door. It's called a door god, which is also used to ward off evil spirits. You can't be too safe when it comes to the evil spirits. These large pots were all over the city. Uh, back in the day, they were always filled with water. Uh, they were here to provide a water supply if there was ever a fire in the palace. In case you were wondering, the restroom at the Forbidden City has earned a four-star rating by the Beijing Tourism Administration. Uh, the uh, four-star rating was about right. Uh, they were decent, uh, but definitely not five stars. Uh, the one thing about using the bathroom in China um, is that most, pu most public bathrooms will only have squat toilets. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, they're basically porcelain fixtures on the floor that you squat over. Uh, Toilets that uh, you actually sit on are called Western toilets. Uh, in addition, uh, when you're in a public restroom, there's no toilet paper in the stalls. There's typically a roll out by the sink, and so you need to plan ahead and take what you uh, anticipate you will need. Uh, the Forbidden City is amazing. Uh, it involves a great deal of walking, but it is well worth the effort. The day we were there, it wasn't too crowded. Uh, it's a place that feels larger than you are, and it's definitely a must visit when seeing uh, when visiting Beijing. Uh, after the Forbidden City, we went to uh, Hutong Lane, which is one of Beijing's oldest neighborhoods, with buildings dating back to the 13th century. Uh, we were driven by pedal car through the narrow alleyways of the neighborhood. Uh, it was a bit different than I thought it would be. I was expecting for it to be more preserved, kind of making it feel like you step back in time, but it really wasn't like that. Uh, we were uh, told we were going to be going to a family's house for lunch. Uh, a family was essentially running like a single table restaurant out of their home and the guides would bring tourists by for a meal. Uh, the husband of the family would do all the cooking in a very small kitchen. Uh, he used to work at a restaurant, so the food was restaurant quality and delicious. Uh, after the meal, the wife spent some time with us, and while she didn't speak in any English, she was very nice. Uh, in the end, it was a great meal and an interesting cultural experience. The next day, we headed out to the Great Wall. There are several different areas uh, set up to visit sections of the wall. This particular section was uh, high up in the mountains and about an hour and a half outside of Beijing. Uh, today involved a great deal of walking and climbing. Uh, and again, it was very hot and muggy. Uh, this was the entrance. Uh, if you've ever been to the like the like the Universal theme parks here in the U.S., there's kind of a it was kind of set up like that with a bunch of shops and restaurants that you have to walk through, kind of like City Walk. Uh, after the shops, then you got on board a bus, which took you further up the mountain. Uh, once you got off the bus, you had to walk up another steep walkway to get to the gondola, which took you up to the actual wall. Uh, the gondola ride was nice. Uh, the gondola we actually rode up in had a side in it saying that Mrs. Michelle, wife of the former American president, rode the car to climb the Great Wall on March 23rd, 2014. Uh, we thought it was funny that we happened to get in Mrs. Michelle's car, uh, even though they spelled, misspelled Michelle. The gondola ride up the steep mountain provided some spectacular views. Once on top, we hiked along the wall for about half a mile before turning around, so we hiked for about a mile. The view was incredible. Uh, it's tough walking on the wall. There are some very steep areas, like uh, these steps, which are rather precarious to ascend and descend. You almost have to kind of go down sideways. Uh, what makes it really tough is that the steps really aren't always equal height, so you have to pay attention with each step. Growing up, you always used to hear that the uh, wall was the only man-made thing viewable from space. Um, I'm not sure where that rumor started, but it is absolutely not true. Uh, while the wall is long, you can see here that it is not very wide, less than the, a regular city street, and you can't see a street from space, so you definitely cannot see the wall either.
Uh, there were several miles of the wall here to hike if you were adventurous. Uh, it went for quite a ways and was incredibly steep in some portions of it uh, as it traversed the crest of this mountain. Uh, one of the things I was looking forward to doing was after going up the mountain in the gondola, you could go back down the mountain on an alpine slide. Uh, but to get to the alpine slide was a little inconvenient from where we were at, and I was the only one in the family who wanted to go down the slide, so it did not work out. Uh, here I am uh, pouting that I did not get to go down the alpine slide. So, so far in the trip, I had two things I wanted to do and uh, two things I failed at. Just like the Forbidden City, uh, visiting the wall is a must do. Uh, if you visit the area, it's really, really cool. Uh, it is truly a wonder and one of those life goal checklist kind of places. It's very much worth the visit. Uh, after the wall, we were taken to a jade store. Uh, in our previous trips, we've been to a number of stores like this. Uh, they are run by the government, and they're typically, they typically have a restaurant in the back. Uh, the government works with the tour groups, and the guides actually bring the groups to these places to eat. And then after eating, you go through the shop. Uh, I believe the guides make a commission as well. Uh, for two days, our guide was extolling the values of Jade and, and kind of discouraging us from shopping in other places prior to visiting the Jade store. Uh, I think she was disappointed that we uh, ended up not being big spenders. Uh, I only picked up uh, something very small at the Jade store, one of the least expensive things in the store. Uh, quality Jade is uh, a very expensive uh, and, and shopping really wasn't a, a large priority for our trip. Uh, there was a large sculpture as you entered the shop that was, uh, that was selling for well over a million dollars. Uh, and then the shop was virtually empty, which was strange as well. Uh, it was a long drive back to our hotel, and on the way, uh, we drove past the Bird's Nest, which was the main uh, stadium for the Beijing Olympics a few years back. For dinner, we went to a place that specialized in Peking duck. Now, until recently, I wasn't really educated as to what went into Peking duck, but um, prior to our trip, I did a little research to learn more and really earned a greater appreciation for how it's prepared as well as how it's, how it's eaten. I'm really glad I did that because I would have had no idea the proper way to eat it. Uh, they cut up the duck right there next to your table. Uh, now, you're provided with these little rice-like tortilla things that you see here in the middle. And what you do is you put in a little duck and you put in some cucumber and onions and some hoisin sauce. And then you fold it up and you eat it like a little uh, burrito. It was delicious, very succulent. Uh, it was something that I probably wouldn't have tried on my own outside of this trip, but I'm glad I did. Uh, it was outstanding. On day four of our trip, we were still in Beijing. Uh, to begin this day, we went to another iconic, iconic landmark, which is the Temple of Heaven. Uh, the main temple of the complex is a circular, triple-gabled structure that is uh, typically what books and magazines and things like that use to represent the city of Beijing. Uh, this building is called the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvests. Uh, it's an impressive structure. Uh, rice is harvested twice a year, so twice a year the emperors, dating back to the Ming Dynasty, which started in the mid-1300s, would come to this building to pray for good harvests. The Temple of Heaven uh, is actually four times larger than the Forbidden City. Uh, a large part of the complex is a public park. There was a, a really long covered walkway where hundreds of seniors were gathered with their friends to play cards and mahjong and even dominoes. Uh, it was kind of cool to see. Uh, the beams of the walkway were painted with colorful designs and it was a beautiful place to hang out. Uh, I like this sign that we saw that told you to not scratch the plants. Uh, this part of the temple houses a building called the Imperial Vault of Heaven. Uh, it is a, surrounded by a smooth circular wall called the Echo Wall. And it's said that this wall has a parabolic effect. You can stand next to it and whisper, and your friend can stand a long ways away from you and hear you clearly. We tried it with not much success. The courtyard was full of people yelling at the wall. Uh, I think it works better when there isn't a noisy crowd there, but the area was beautiful. Uh, after the temple, we visited a pearl market. 
Uh, we were given a little presentation about freshwater pearls. Uh, they uh, actually fished an oyster out of this tank and opened it up for us. Uh, now, I did think this was really interesting. Saltwater oysters typically, I believe, only have one pearl, but these freshwater oysters have many pearls, sometimes up to like 15 or 20. You can see here how the pearls actually form in lines out in the inside of the shell. The larger pearls are used for jewelry, but the smaller ones like these are actually used for cosmetics and other things. Uh, I thought it was funny because on the wall they actually had picture of, pictures of Michelle Obama as well as Hillary Clinton, each wearing pearl necklaces. Uh, we did pick up a couple of things here, but uh, shopping, uh, like I mentioned before, wasn't going to be a major focus of this trip. Next up, we went to the Emperor's Summer Palace. Uh, it's a ways out from Beijing, but uh, it is very large. Uh, the palace is about a, a square mile in size, with about three quarters of that being taken up by lakes and rivers. Um, this palace dates back to the Jin Dynasty, which is around 1100 AD. Along the main lake, there is a very long covered walkway, and what I found really cool was that on each of the hundreds of beams, there was a unique painting. There were unique paintings along the side of the walkway as well. I mean, I can only imagine how long it take, took to do all of this work. Now, who knows? Maybe they brought in a thousand artists and they busted it out in an afternoon. Anyway, it was very impressive. Uh, the grounds were beautiful. Uh, there was a lot of rivers and lakes, and on the, the main lake, you could actually go for a ride on these dragon boats, which were cool. Uh, on the lake, there was another boat, but this is a boat that wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, this boat here is made of solid marble. Uh, the emperor would have uh, parties out on the marble boat. Uh, the Summer Palace is beautiful and relaxing. Uh, we had been doing a lot of running around, so it was nice to kind of have an activity that was rather low-key. We had dinner at a local restaurant. Uh, as was the case for most of our meals, we were served way too much food. Uh, as you can see here, it's typically served on like a large Lazy Susan, uh, family style, and then everyone uses their chopsticks and uh, takes their food onto smaller plates. Or a lot of times people just ate, uh, when we were with groups, they just ate directly from the, each bowl with their chopsticks. Usually there isn't a serving spoon, and so you are literally taking your food out with the same chopsticks that you're eating with. That's just tradition. It was now time to say goodbye to Beijing. Uh, we headed off to the train station for an overnight trip to Xi'an. Uh, outside the train station, I snapped a picture of these gentlemen, mainly because of the two guys on the right. Uh, they are in a typical squat that you see folks in when they're just hanging out. Uh, it's just not a position you see a lot of folks take in the West, but it's something you saw a lot of in China. Uh, the train station was crowded and the air conditioning wasn't the greatest. Uh, so we were looking forward to actually getting on the train, uh, even though it was going to be for an 11 hour trip. Uh, it was interesting to uh, get to see some of the countryside. Uh, once you get outside of the city, virtually 100% of the population are farmers. Uh, I never really got a good picture of it, but um, there, from what I could tell, there really weren't centralized graveyards. So each property seemed to have a grave or two or three on the property somewhere. It was just interesting to see. Uh, we had a sleeper car to ourselves. Uh, it was small and cramped, but decent enough. Um, I had wondered how rough it would be sleeping all night on the train. Well, uh, here I am at the beginning of the night, and then here I am in the morning. It was a rough night. Uh, it was an interesting way to travel, and I had never slept on a train like that before, so uh, I can cross that off my list, but I'm not thinking I need to do that again anytime soon. Uh, something funny happened actually when we were exiting the train. Uh, two cars were actually using the same exit. And for a while, traffic merged like normal, kind of like zippering together. Uh, but then this large group of French tourists began to exit the other car and they would not let any traffic from our car merge. They just continued to stream out and kind of bullied their way, way out. Um, we finally made our, our way to the exit and I was the first one in the family in line. And rather than exiting, I actually kind of stood in the way of the other car's passengers in order to let my family go by unimpeded. 
Uh, in China, there is definitely a different level of personal space and social courtesies. Um, if you want to get someplace, you just go. Uh, that goes for driving as well. Uh, if you want to get someplace with your car, you just go and stick your nose out. Uh, if you are patiently waiting in line for something, you're going to get run over or someone will push ahead of you. It's just something you kind of need to get used to. In crowds, I would often need to play uh, kind of like fullback for the rest of the family, parting the way for everyone behind me. So on the train, I was actually blocking the way so my family could exit. And a man from the French group actually tried pushing his way past me. And I, I kind of shoved up against the wall and wouldn't let him. Uh, and then he tried pushing by harder and I still wouldn't let him pass. And then he grumbled something about me being a, a stupid American, uh, which just made me laugh. Uh, and then I exited after my, friend, or my family had uh, disembarked. Uh, a couple of years ago, we actually traveled to France, and while in the country, um, you know, the country for the most part has an image of, of rudeness, uh, especially to Americans, and, but during our visit, we encountered nothing but the most friendly and helpful people. We really loved it there, and I'd love to go back sometime. Uh, I thought it funny that I had to travel halfway around the world in the opposite direction in order to count, encounter my uh, first rude Frenchman. We met up with our guide, uh, who would be with us for the duration of our time in Xi'an, and his name was Tony. Uh, he insisted that we actually stop somewhere, somewhere nearby for a snack to relax after our long trip. Uh, he took us to McDonald's, and I, I kind of just hated that. It was like a cliche. Take the Americans to the McDonald's. That uh, That's what they'll like. So uh, I was actually trying to avoid places like this. We didn't come all the way to uh, China to go to a McDonald's. Uh, I will say it was a nice McDonald's. Um, uh, that uh, they, they, It felt like a regular McDonald's, not like a McDonald's in China. Uh, the main outing for this day was going to be visiting the Terracotta Warriors. The Warriors are located about an hour outside of Xi'an, which is a city with a population of 12 million. Uh, first of all, we stopped by a shop and factory where they make Terracotta Warriors replicas at a, uh, in various sizes. Uh, it was actually very interesting to see the process of how they pack the clay into the molds, then they add the details by hand. They have to let the clay sit there for days to dry out, and then it's fired in an outdoor kiln. Uh, there was an adjacent store which sold so a variety of furniture and other gift items. Uh, we were told that they had a five-star restroom that we could use. Uh, I didn't have a chance to use it. I should have, though, just to see the difference between it and the uh, four-star restroom back at the Forbidden City. Uh, then it was on to the Warriors, and, and this was really a fascinating visit. Um, there are several different big uh, dig sites right next to each other that are now contained in buildings. Uh, the warrior, warriors, if you're not familiar, were commissioned by the very first emperor of China about 2200 years ago. Uh, it's amazing to see something that old. Uh, every single statue was modeled after an actual person, so they are all unique. Uh, their clothes are different, some are fatter, some are skinnier, and uh, all of the faces are different. Uh, everything was originally stored in these caves which had wooden supports, but over time the wood deteriorated and the tunnel collapsed, uh, burying everything over a thousand years. Uh, and what they have unearthed is only a fraction of what is buried in the area. The entire site is around 35 square miles. However, they aren't aggressively unearthing a great deal more right now. Uh, when they uncover a piece, it's actually painted. Uh, not this bright, this is replicas, but uh, the color fades in about 15 minutes after exposure to the air. So until they determine how to better preserve any of the new finds, they really aren't digging up a lot more. They actually know where the emperor is buried, and that tomb is enclosed by masonry and still sealed, uh, but they're waiting to open that as well for the same reasons. Uh, we were told that they anticipate it'll take almost like 75 to 100 years before they're able to open the emperor's tomb. Uh, you can see here in the back where there are just a bunch of statues that are so badly broken that you can't even reconstruct them. Uh, but there are others like these here where the pieces are large enough for them to be put back together. Uh, you can see uh, here, this is an area where you can see the remnants of the wood roof. And underneath uh, this dirt are more warriors just waiting to be uncovered. The warriors had an adjoining shopping and restaurant plaza, similar to that of the wall. Uh, we went to the one of the restaurants for lunch. 
Uh, nearby, here's a picture of the farmer who actually discovered the Warriors back in 1974. Uh, and in the lobby of the restaurant, here is the farmer selling and signing books. Uh, in 1974, he was actually digging a well on his property and came across some pottery fragments. Uh, the site of the well was here, uh, marked by that white sign with the red arrow. You could really see that it's at the far right far right hand corner of the dig. Uh, literally, if he had done t dug 20 feet in either of two directions, he would have been outside the masonry walls and wouldn't have found anything. They might still be undiscovered today. The meal was delicious. It was one of the better meals that we had uh, at that point of the trip. Again, way too much food for us. Uh, after lunch, we went downstairs for a tea ceremony. Uh, a woman brought out a bunch of teas and told us about each one of them and then had us taste a few of them. Uh, I'm not a huge tea fan, but there were a couple I actually really liked and we uh, bought some to take home with us. We were actually seated next to an American couple from uh, Denver who are now living in Vietnam. Uh, they were very nice. Uh, it was day five of our trip and it was the first Americans that we had encountered, so it was just kind of nice. Uh, oh, and at the tea place, I found this sign in the restroom. Uh, isn't this uh, what Neil Armstrong said when he landed on the moon? Uh, I just thought this was kind of funny. Uh, after lunch, we were taken to a small village for our accommodations for the night, uh, which was the equivalent of a bed and breakfast. Uh, the rooms were very sparse, but it really gave us more of a feeling as to how the locals lived rather than only staying in hotels. Uh, in the evening, the husband and wife who ran the place taught us how to make dumplings. Uh, and then we had a nice home cooked meal, which included our freshly made dumplings. The next morning, we were actually taken through the Old Village. Uh, this part of the tour was very odd. Uh, from the description we were provided, uh, we were expecting for this to be kind of a community of small farmers living in very old homes, but it really wasn't that. Uh, it was more like walking through the rundown abandoned buildings of an inner city. Lots of trash and dirt roads and rubble and debris. Uh, and at the end of our walk, there was a couple of homes like we were expecting with small gardens, but uh, surely not a, uh, enough to justify a, uh, a tour. Uh, next, we were taken to the studio of a local artist who specializes in colorful farm paintings as well as intricate paper cutting. Uh, she provided us with a, a, a paper cutting demonstration. She was extremely talented. Uh, in front of us, she created these butterflies. Uh, then she actually walked us through creating something of our own, which ended up being this Chinese symbol for happiness. Doubled. So, double happiness. Now, something about using the internet in China. Uh, the government has put something in place which has been dubbed the Great Firewall, which blocks virtually all social media and a website and apps throughout the country. Uh, that sets sites like YouTube and Instagram and Twitter, as well as any Google-related products. Um, access to other sites can be blocked as well. Uh, the odd thing I found was that on my phone, uh, both the YouTube and Instagram apps would receive notifications of comments and new content, but if I actually tried to use the app and see what the full comment was or to view the content, uh, it was blocked. Uh, we could receive standard texts, uh, but our roaming wireless service was intermittent at best. Uh, in the end, it was actually a little bit nice to be somewhat unplugged for a while. Uh, China, like the rest of the world, has uh, definitely turned into a cell phone culture. Wherever you go, just like in the U.S., you will find everyone staring at their phones. Uh, we said goodbye to Xi'an and went to the train station to take a bullet train to the next city on our itinerary, which was Wuhan. Uh, the bullet train runs out of a different train station uh, than where we arrived. Uh, it's more modern and uh, the air conditioning was better as well, which we grew to appreciate. The bullet train was very cool. Uh, it was very smooth and cruised at approximately 300 kilometers per hour, which is about 190 miles per hour. Uh, they actually had a display that showed the speed. It was kind of fun to see the numbers climb. And for the longest time, we stayed at 299. And I kept getting frustrated because uh, I, I stared at it forever, uh, waiting for it to finally tick over to 300 to take a picture. Uh, it was funny. Uh, there was a woman who was cleaning the train, and about 15 minutes into the trip, she comes out of the bathroom right in front of where we were sitting with a piece of plastic hanging on the end of a short stick. 
she proceeded to yell at everyone in the car. I have no idea the exact words she said, but she definitely got her point across. Basically, she was saying, stop to throwing trash down the toilet. I can still hear her yelling, but it was funny to see someone just yelling at a, a car full of people. The four and a half hours passed slowly, but the ride was comfortable. Uh, I really actually wish that we had more high-speed rail in the U.S. More, well, any race high-speed rail in the U.S. We arrived in Wuhan, uh, which is a city of about 11 million people. Uh, and it's situated on the Yangtze River uh, and has a, a much different vibe to it than the uh, previous two cities we visited. Uh, it's kind of more like Chicago compared to New York City. Uh, it's still a very large city, but with uh, a different vibe to it. Uh, this was the view out our hotel window. It was very nice uh, to see the Yangtze. Uh, you know, at this point, the river is about a mile across and people swim across it all the time. Uh, actually, at the beginning of this next time lapse here, uh, you could see in the lower portion a group of folks actually finishing up their swim. Uh, there's a constant stream of barge traffic going through in both directions. Uh, and at night, it's really interesting because uh, dozens of buildings are all tied together with a synchronized light system. Uh, I've heard that you can even rent out the lights to put up a message of your own, like if you wanted to propose or have a, a special announcement or something like that. On a previous trip to China, we had stayed in this very same hotel for a week. I really didn't remember much about the hotel itself, but I definitely remember the view of the river. Uh, the next day, our guide for this trip, Jeffrey, uh, took us down uh, by the other bank of the Yangtze River, across the river, to a place called Hubu Street. Uh, this place was really remarkable. Uh, it was like it was out of a movie. Uh, it really wasn't a market. It was more of a food court with lots of meats and produce and even ice cream. Everything looked delicious. Uh, just check out these fruits. Talk about vibrant colors. Uh, that's about as good as fruit can look. Uh, it was cool to see a place where locals hung out uh, as opposed to uh, places where there were lots of tourists. Next, we went to the Yellow Crane Tower. Uh, the tower was built back in the 1980s to replace a building which had stood for a thousand years but was actually destroyed by fire back in the 1800s. Uh, the area involved a great deal of walking and climbing. Uh, we climbed the seven stories to get to the top of the tower and the view was amazing. Uh, after coming down, we made our way to the bell of 10,000 years good luck. Uh, the rest of the family actually took turns ringing the bell, but I didn't need to. Uh, I had rung it on a previous trip 14 years ago, which still meant I had 9,986 years of good luck left. Under the bell, there was a little pot, and uh, after you rang the bell, they gave you a bunch of coins, and you threw them in the pot for good luck. Uh, kind of like a little carnival game. For lunch, our guide took us out to another out-of-the-way restaurant. Uh, like Hubu Street, it was kind of really nice to go to a non-touristy place. Uh, you walked in and there was like samples of all of the dishes. And above the samples, there were corresponding sticks with the numbers of the dishes on them. Uh, you gathered up the sticks for each of the dishes you wanted and then handed them over to the staff. It's kind of just kind of an interesting way to order. Uh, we were taken to the back of the restaurant and into a private room, uh, which was kind of the, the way it was for a lot of the restaurants we uh, went to. Um, I don't know if it was because the guides set them up or what, but we were generally taken to a, a kind of a private room in the back. Um, right after we sat down, these two kids actually approached me and, uh, and nicely asked if they could take a picture with me. Uh, basically, folks around uh, there where we were at didn't run into uh, many white people. So when we would walk down a street, we would get lots of stares and double takes from everyone around. Uh, you know, around here, seeing someone who is uh, a white is a bit of a novelty. But these kids were nice. Next up was a trip to the Hubei Provincial Museum. Uh, we didn't have high expectations for this visit, but I was uh, dead wrong. It turned out to be very interesting and educational, uh, mainly due to our tour guide, who walked us through the exhibit and did a fantastic job of telling us the story of the exhibit, really bringing it to life. 
Uh, basically, the items here were found in a tomb of Marquise Yi of Zhang, uh, who was just a, a dignitary. Uh, this gentleman died around 433 BC, and the Chinese army actually discovered the tomb by accident in 1977 when they were building a factory. Uh, inside the tomb, there was the marquee uh, and a large number of items, such as this container here, which was uh, an ancient thermos of sorts or refrigerator used to keep things either hot or cold for extended period of times. There was a lot of other relics as well. Uh, there was a large number of musical instruments also, but the main discovery was this set of 64 bronze bells. Uh, the intricate craftsmanship on these bells was incredible. Again, it kind of blows me away in looking at these relics that they were almost 2,500 years old. In the tomb, there was also coffins containing 13 concubines and another eight coffins with women believed to be musicians, uh, who in theory would play instruments for the marquee in the afterlife. Uh, that must have been a rough life. Uh, if you worked for a guy and that guy dies, then you gotta go too. So uh, yeah, if I heard the boss died, uh, I would uh, pretty much wanna hightail it out of there. Uh, go down the road to the next town over where no one knows who you are. Uh, after going through the exhibit, we attended a show where musicians actually played the type of instruments that were found in the tombs. Uh, these were replicas, not the actual instruments. And the music was nice, and it really did a, a good job of bringing the exhibition to life as well. Uh, after the museum, we went back to our hotel for the night. Uh, this was actually day seven of our trip, and we had been eating Chinese food virtually every meal. The food was great uh, but that we had, but after eating the same type of food for a week, we were getting kind of tired of it. So we ordered some room service spaghetti uh, to have something a little bit different. Uh, this was our last night in Wuhan, uh, and uh, I really enjoy Wuhan a great deal. If you ever plan a trip to China, it's a city I would highly recommend you visit. Okay, I think that's enough for this first installment of this travel vlog. I hope you found it interesting. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.